ได้ได้ริมบานจุ่มทลายรีตรายดาหนวบมักนาฮึกได้วิบันหยอบยอกน้องจันดารุบใสมันกันอาเนินดอนรุกยอมลอยสำลังแดงอานี้ Ani was the first Khmer song that I learnt. I've sung it maybe a thousand times, but every time I sing it, it still moves me because this simple collection of chords and melodies somehow holds part of myself, my commitment to Cambodia, and my Cambodian family. Songs are like that; they're like containers for our feelings. Over time, they become like soundtracks to our emotional development. Hearing just a few seconds of music can transport us through time and space to the feeling of being in love, or of heartache, of excitement or loneliness. They become our lifelong friends, our identities. Ani is one of those songs to me, but also for many, many Cambodians. It was composed over 50 years ago in 1969, a time of intense creative development and cultural change in Cambodia. It was written by the brother of the king, Prince s i r i b o t and every time I listen to this song, I, I can't help but imagine what life would have been like back then to be part of such a burgeoning music scene. I also wonder about Ani. Who was Ani? Was she a real person? Would she have broken my heart too? Is she still alive, somewhere in Phnom Penh, aging gracefully into her 70s? Or, like so many, was she killed during the war? I will never know. The point is, songs stimulate our imaginations as well as our feelings, and that powerful combination makes it irresistible for us to invest ourselves into songs. We start to relate to them personally, and we test our own identities. Against those contained in the songs, music is is huge. It's not just the music itself. There's a whole identity ecosystem around a song, which influences and changes its identity. One of the biggest parts of that is the singer of the song, and the most famous version of Ani, and there've been many, is none other than Cambodia's true music idol, Lok Ta s i n t i s a m o t He needs no introduction in Cambodia, but for anyone else, he is an unimpeachable national hero. He composed and sang over a thousand songs in styles that range from traditional to folk, classic pop, rock and roll, bossa nova, mariachi. He's an inspiration to every single Cambodian, especially since that's such a ta, his granddaughter. Now she never got to meet him because he was almost certainly killed during the war, but she's taken on the responsibility to preserve his legacy. She also happens to be a fantastic singer and songwriter, and as an artist, she's like a living bridge that connects Cambodia's past with its present. Because of that context, her grandfather's identity inevitably surrounds her songs. Especially when she does a cover of one of his classics, like this. <laughs> But like her grandfather, she is also fearlessly exploring her own creative inspirations and musical identity, like in this song, which we've just finished recording. But songs live outside of genetics and even time. Through music, Cambodia's heritage can live in the present, but not all of that heritage is a positive thing. Of course, it does include the Khmer Rouge, who set out to completely destroy modern culture in Cambodia, including the emerging popular music scene and most of its artists. That history has had a profound impact on the development of the Cambodian music industry, 
and it's a legacy still felt by many of the original artists who are now exploring the same kind of creative expressions that got their forebears killed during the war. It's an exciting time to be a music producer in Cambodia. Of the hundred or so artists I've had the honor to work with, almost all of them are deeply committed to restoring the dignity of the Cambodian music industry. They want to reclaim the skills and the honor of an impressive past that was so tragically interrupted by the war. They want to rise up and compete with their neighboring countries. They want to amplify the Cambodian voice in the world. These themes are present in the identity ecosystem around their songs. It's not usually what they write about. They write about love and heartache. They focus on the present and they follow their stylistic inspiration anywhere it leads them, which in today's world is everywhere, anytime. And so here's a question that many people are facing in the music industry here. What is the role of music in this period of cultural change? How do we preserve the past whilst looking towards the future? It's a complex question, but the answer in a way is quite simple. We can and we must do both, but not in every song. And it's not the responsibility of every artist to do both, but it is their responsibility to be conscious of both because artists can be role models. And I've had the pleasure of working with many role models the people I work with tend to represent a, a particular but small community of Cambodians. They uh, tend to be educated, multilingual, and drawn to creative expression. They're ambitious, they're curious, they're uh, influential, motivated. In other words, they're role models not just of Cambodian youth culture, but of global youth culture. And because they are at the edge of this cultural change, from some perspectives, they can be seen as a kind of a threat to conservative Khmer culture. Now, it's a real threat. It's based on legitimate perspectives, and it needs to be taken seriously. But to help us navigate this, I think it's important to remember a couple of things. Firstly, this kind of thing has happened before. One of the things that made the music of Sinsi Samut's time so amazing was the integration of international styles into existing Cambodian styles. New sounds, new chords, new structures, new harmonies, new instruments gave artists like Sinsi Samut a bigger canvas on which to express themselves. And thanks to their skill and their integrity, they created a whole world of music that's now celebrated as being uniquely Khmer. The second thing to think about is that influences go both ways. Modern Cambodian music is of course influenced by global music trends, but the world can also be influenced by Cambodian music. However, the challenge is Cambodian music seems so small, so insignificant compared to the rest of the world. But it's that very insignificance that makes it more precious, especially in a world that's searching for new inspiration and new ideas. It becomes very significant. One barrier to this is language. Khmer is unique to Cambodia and foreigners find it difficult to engage with songs they don't understand. One way around this is to sing in the global language of English. But of course that takes away one of the key ingredients of what makes a Cambodian song. Of the artists I work with, most that sing in English uh, don't do it as a strategy. They do it because it's who they are. They're multilingual. They use English every day. And it's natural and authentic for it to creep into their songs. Frankly, their command of English is why I'm able to work with them so deeply and so meaningfully. Conversely, my respect for and my deepening skill in Khmer is what gives me the credibility to work with them too. And this two-way dynamic is what's at the heart of being a music producer. My job is to understand an artist as a person and try to help them express themselves through music. It's a creative exchange. It's an emotional exchange. And as an Australian living and working in Cambodia, it's also a cultural exchange. And in this way, it's a small model of how we can reframe cultural threats into cultural exchanges. Because whilst 
it's my job to serve the creative interests of Cambodians. It's also my responsibility to learn and to grow from them. And that's why I'm on this journey to sing in Khmer. And why, especially for this talk, I've put together an original song in Khmer that I'm going to sing for you very soon. It's a bit of a, an experiment, really, in order to show you how a song can be a playground for uh, expressing identity and cultural exchange. I've done it with a collaborator, one of my favorite collaborators here. We work together here at the Sound Initiative, but actually our life stories are very, very different. One thing we do have in common is that we live and work far from our families. I wrote a song about this a few years ago, and I wanted to see if Hien could find her story in my song. And she did. She wrote the words in Khmer, and she's taught me how to sing it. And along the way, it became our song, our story, our shared identity. And now Hien's been actually waiting in the control room, ready to record this. So whilst I get ready, I'm going to let her introduce our song. អូខេចាយំរាបសួនអ្នកទាំងអស់គ្នាអញ្ចឹងនេះគឺជាលើកទី are you ready? Okay, let's go. Some name don't look plain, very dry. Come, no pine day, I'm in three. Draw chip and yet chip, get quiet, call it lost, rock and ไอ้ไอ้เก่งนึกนี้ปัดเพลงจริงปอนลบไกลไอ้สกบมันชอบจิตไอ้กาอนุสาคนลองจำจองมันไอ้คิดนึกดาวจินนี้เพียบก็